Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're taking a look at a new Mecha Musume kit, which is really a lot more Mecha than it is Musume, but this is the Orca from the Momo line here, I guess, or Mobile Movementus. As far as I know, this design isn't actually really from anything, and it's a pretty odd, obscure one, but it's an interesting design, so I had to check it out, and I want to share that with you in today's review, guys. Let's go ahead and get into it. So alright guys, we'll start off taking a look at this very cool box art. I don't know if you guys are Shin Megami Tensei fans, but this definitely has like the look and style of like something from Shin Megami Tensei, which I definitely like about it. It's got the Momo logo up there, Orca, Type, Kurchel, Mo Mobile Movement Test. There's a lot of kind of titling stuff going on over there. It's 1 on 44 scale. Here's a closer look at some of the artwork there. It looks very nice. On the side of the box, we got all the same stuff there. On the bottom of the box, we got to look at what the kit is going to look like when it's all put together, front and back, and painted with its sword weapons. Here's another image, a kind of close-up image of the kit there. And around on the other side, some more information there in Japanese, another image of the painted model kit. Let's go ahead and pop open the box. And not very full, as you can see, there's a lot of empty space in there. It's not going to be uh, a huge kit, and as you can see, there's a good amount of parts there, but nothing really too crazy. Here is our manual with some more photo references there on the back. It looks like the entire manual is gonna be in color too, which is always cool to see. We're putting everything together in the right order and everything, so that looks pretty cool. We do have a parts list here on the front page, which is also in color, but the runners are not colored in their actual coloring, which is kind of strange, considering that there's a lot of color here in the manual. All the pieces are colored. But that's very cool. At the back we also have some more illustrations here of the design and then over here I guess this is like different color patterns and stuff that you can work with if you want some ideas for different color schemes. We've got some more information over here, some technical specs about it. You can see the total height is 30 meters tall is how big it's supposed to be. Then over here, this is really interesting, as these are maybe some alternate designs for the head without really knowing any of the background around this kit or anything. I don't know if just these are just different 3D models that they tried out and they end up choosing a different one, but there's some different head variants there that look pretty cool. And over on the other page, some other interesting custom builds. So again, I don't think, or I don't know if these are anything that you can actually get anywhere. I think these are just all custom builds that have been made by people, but there's like a spider one, fox one, like squid, octopus ones there, praying mantis one, a rabbit one, so it's very interesting custom builds there, but again, unfortunately all the type is all there in Japanese. And on the last couple pages here, we have a sort of comic, which I guess is giving some details about the kit and like how to put the, put the kit together and everything, but there's some girls there and the orca, and some more of that just continued on to the other page, so interesting. But that's all for the manual, let's go ahead and check out the runners. So here's runner A, which is in a warm white color, and I can already tell by some of the size of these pieces that the kit is going to be larger than I was expecting. Here's runner B for some more pieces in that warm white, we've got two of these. Runner C is here in black for some of the joint parts and any of our black parts around on the kit. And runner D is in this really nice molded gold, which is a very deep gold color. It looks really good, and there's our sword piece on there as well. And runner E is actually just our polycaps here in black, so we've got two of this E runner, and that's it. Alright guys, so here's the Orca all built up, and the first thing I'll point out is just how big this kit is. It's definitely larger than your standard Mecha Musume kit, either the ones from Kotobukiya or from Bandai are generally around one-tenth to one-twelfth scale. This one's definitely much larger, very tall. A lot of that's in the massive legs and feet, but anyway, it's a very cool, very interesting design here. I've gone ahead and done some panel lining on this in brown to just bring out some of the details for you guys, especially on the areas uh, that are white. You know, it's just a little bit harder to see the details, so hopefully you guys can get a good sense of all the details around on this kit. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the kit itself and its accessories. So while the kit does have a lot of nice articulation, which we'll take a look at, it does have a number of seam lines as well here on the forearms, the front of the legs, down here on the feet as well. Nothing really too out of the ordinary for the articulation. The head will go up to about there, down to there. The shoulder joint will lift up to about 90 degrees, then you can just rotate that forward and back as normal. Got some rotation here in the bicep and the elbow joint will give you a pretty full bend there like so. The wrist joint will rotate from side to side and also bend back and forth. Here in the midsection you've got some back and forward bend there a little bit kind of side to side. It's basically just on a ball joint so you can rotate that there as well. Down here in the hip section you're able to get the legs all the way spread out to about there is going to be the, about the extent of that all the way 
forward. That's gonna be about the extent there. Nice double joint here in the knee with a little bit of separation with that little bit of knee armor there. The knee joint, I will just say, does look a bit weird how the leg kind of goes down and then kind of goes back a little bit. So interesting leg shape there. But you do also have some rotation here between those black and white sections. Going down here then to the ankles, you have a kind of separation of like the kind of shoe as it were, sort of at the bottom, so that separates there like that. Otherwise you can move the ankle a little bit forward and back like so. You can also rotate this side to side, basically changing the angle of it like that. And then up underneath the feet, there's what that detail is going to look like. For our hand options, we've got two of the exact same set of hands, it seems like. I can't really tell any difference between those. But aside from the open hands, you are also going to have a set of holding hands, which you're going to use for your weapons and accessories here. Those are going to include this one kind of pistol type weapon here. Very simple, but it's just got the handle. It's all here molded in gold and also your two different type of sword this straight sword and this longer a little bit curved sword here and again really nice detail on both of those now, all these weapons can be stored on the body you have four of these kind of attachment pieces which are just pretty simple they just kind of clip onto place like that onto the handle the same thing goes for the gun you can just kind of clip that onto the handle and this can be plugged onto any one of these hard points here on the shoulder, on the side of the hip, on the side of the leg, on the back shoulder blades, and on the center of the back if you remove this little white panel right there. Right in the center we've got another little hard point there, but so for example you just wanted to have this stored on the back or something like so, and store the swords on the hips. Now the other thing, aside from just being able to clip the handle into there like that, you can also, you can see that it has a hole in it, you can use that to actually slot the sword into there and that's actually gonna be a little bit better way to hold that just because the clip isn't that tight and this is just gonna be a little bit more secure way to make sure that those don't fall out. And for a size comparison here to just illustrate exactly how tall this kit is, there it is next to your standard 30 Minutes Sisters kit from Bandai and as you can see, it's a very much taller. This kit is gonna be coming in at about 18 centimeters in height, which is your standard height for a 1-100 scale Gundam kit, for example. But all right guys, as we take a look at some different poses here with this kit, trying out the weapons and everything, here are some of my thoughts about it. For one, this is the first kit in its line and I'm definitely looking forward to some more releases. I think it's a really interesting design. At first I wasn't entirely sold on it. It's definitely different, but it's really grown on me a lot as I've built it and as I've had a chance to uh, just kind of pose it around a little bit, work with it a little bit. The only real small complaints I would have with this would basically be a couple of the polycap joints in like the hips, the elbows, and the shoulders can be a little bit weak, not really all that weak. I just kind of wish that those were a little bit more solid. Those simple polycap joints, they're not always the best. And there's the, the couple of seam lines that I mentioned on the kit, but that is, again, pretty normal for Mechamusume kits. So overall, not really too much to complain about this. I think it's got a really cool design, a lot of really great details on there, some nice color separation just straight out of the box between the black, white, and gold parts on there. And albeit basic, but some very nice options for the weapons and everything too with your two different type swords and the pistol and the number of different ways that you can mount them onto the kit. I think there are actually some pretty nice options there for the weapons, but again, I'm looking forward to future releases. It'll be really cool to see what comes out in the future if they end up releasing something uh, that has a little bit something more substantial in the way of like a larger heavy weapon or something like that. In that case, definitely some strengthening of the joints I think would be required. I don't think that this kit would be able to hold up anything all that heavy. Also, I'd like to see future releases come with an included stand. For this one, I'm just using a Bandai Action Base, uh, which is meant for 1 in 44 scale, and it's kind of small. I'm making it work, but it's not really the best option. Honestly, like a Kotobukiya flying base would be a better option for this if you get one and you want to use a base for it. But again, hopefully future releases will maybe come with one. But let me know your guys' thoughts on this kit down in the comment section. What do you think about the design? What do you think about the kit overall? Is it something that you're interested in or not really all that much? And what would you like to see in any future releases in this line? Let me know. Uh, as always, guys, thanks so much for checking out the video. If you'd like to like, comment, subscribe, any of that would be greatly appreciated. It really Really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you all so much. Until next time, hope you're all having a great day. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.